Andy, I like that T-shirt. Yeah. Nice. Very nice. One of my favorites. Yeah, and then the back, uh, yeah. Pray, listen, obey. Yep. Awesome, man, bro. And uh, there's a word love within yeah, the word revolution. Excellent. How, how long is uh, revolution now? Uh? Wow. Uh, it started since... Uh, it, it's kind of like sparked in 2008. And then 2009 is yeah. kind of like took yeah. off. So yeah. that means uh, it was probably in 2006 or 2007 when I first caught the word uh, revolution yeah. Yeah. in my time of prayer. Yeah. And uh, I remember you know, being on my knees and crying out uh, to the Lord, Lord, you know, uh, when are we going to see a revival in this nation and how is it going to come about? Yeah. I'm glad that most dreams, if not most answers, come from a place of a cry. Yeah. And so our cry was, God, you got to help us, uh, you got to show us the way. And then in my time of prayer, the same time I was crying out to the Lord, He showed me a word, revolution. He says, it's going to take a revolution. And in that word, uh, just like your T-shirt, yep. the word love was there so clearly, you know, sort of, you know, read backwards, of course. And uh, almost looks like God was going to do something counterculture. Yeah. And the Lord says, you know, Jesus himself, when he came, uh, he did not come with war or threats. Yep. Uh, or he did not come wanting to fight the government. He came in love. And we all know that he went to the cross. Uh, and that the nails weren't the ones that nailed him there or yeah. kept him there. It was his love for us. Because nothing could have kept him there. He was God. He was powerful. Uh, in fact, I think he himself said he could have called uh, thousands of angels to come and mm. deliver him from the Roman soldiers. Yeah. But it was his love that took him to the cross. So the Lord says love, that same love is the love that's going to change this nation. That's what revolution is really about. Yeah. It's about change. Yeah. That's the heart of revolution. Yeah. But the bottom line is that it's revival. Uh, we, yeah. we were crying out for a Malaysian revival. And revival just means going back to the way God meant it to be. Yeah. In fact, going back to God. And when you go back to God, you go back to His Word, you go back to the way He wants it. Yeah. Uh, and if everybody could go back to God and live the way God wants us to live, then this nation will be so, so much better, right? Yeah. So blessed. Uh, everyone will be able to live in peace and harmony and loving each other and being generous to one another. So a revival is really what this nation needs. Yeah, I remember coming to you uh, that many years ago, Pastor, because uh, I'm a youth pastor, Yeah, uh, you know that, and uh, it, I had to grow a youth ministry from scratch and we had like really three teenagers to start with. Right. So by the grace of God, of course, we grew, you know, we were able to reach out to many young people, uh, from the schools in our area yeah. and uh, at one point I think we reached about 60 teenagers but like many ministries, many churches, many movements we kind of like plateau yeah. at around that number and no matter how hard we tried or what creative means we, we, uh, we employed uh, it's just not growing so out of that a frustration grew like hey you know how can uh, the product is so good yeah. you know, the gospel is yeah. such a good product it's such a yeah. good thing you know why would anyone not want this right and we all know that if you taste the lord you will see that he is good yeah. so this frustration of like how come we, we can't seem to be able yeah. to attract young people that to frustration come? is like the like, like cry i was talking about yeah right? yeah that cry that almost a desperation like yeah. come on you know it's, if only the young people can taste how good god is yes. you know they will never want anything else yeah. so i came to you and i think you know you said to said to me to pray and yeah. i did and after praying, and I think you prayed as well, and I, when I came back to you, I expected a totally different answer yeah. from you. Like maybe, okay, here's a higher budget, you know, maybe do more, like, you know, uh, big, big kind of events or whatever to attract young people. But I remember so clearly you told me God spoke to you to close down the youth yes. service. To me, which was a very, very big shock. Sure. I don't think any <laughs> youth ministry growth books will ever say that, oh, if you want to grow youth ministry, close it down. Yeah. <laughs> But yet, that's what God led you to tell me, and I was, I was of course in shock. I was like, huh? Yeah. Uh, I remember checking you. Are we still talking about the same thing? Right? We want to reach more young people, right? Yeah. But that set me on a path. So you, you, you put me on a, because you didn't give me all the answers. So you yeah. said, well, you, you, you are the youth pastor. Go figure yeah. it out, right? In, in, in a nutshell, that's yeah. what you said. So I said, okay. So I went to God in prayer, and uh, it's in those times of prayer and frustration and desperation that God revealed more and more to us yeah. his, um, his plan for the world. Yeah. His plan for how 
can, how we can reach the world actually. Uh, of course, that time we didn't know that it's the revolution we know today, that movement. Um, so there, there was no more youth service. What do we do with all the youth that we have, the leaders that we already raised? Uh, and I remember God saying to us, and it's confirmed by different people, uh, that God doesn't want us to just anymore focus on bringing young people, or just people like, in general, to church. That's right. But to bring church to people. Yeah. That sounds good on a poster, on a car sticker, but we have to figure out what does that mean? Right. Does that mean we run church programs in schools? Does that mean we, you know, do we set up events, Christian events in offices? What does that mean? And of course then that put us on a path to, the, to, to learn what is church. And of course we realized that church is us. Yeah. So we started teaching the young people, hey, you are the church. Yeah. Uh, if, you, if you in the past thought about bringing a sick friend to church to be healed, now maybe you can have a paradigm shift because you are the church, you can bring healing to your friend. Yeah. So if your friend is in school and, and complains of a headache, you can actually lay hands on them yes. and say, hey bro, I can pray for you now, right. my God can heal you. So it was just this simple thought, this, this idea that sparked everything faster. We, we, we told the young people, hey, God can use you, yeah. you can heal. Um, Preaching the gospel is not always using scriptures only. Yeah. Uh, the Bible does say, uh, let's not just love in words or tongue, but in action and in yeah. truth. That's how whole, the whole love in action. Yeah. And I think that sounded not just appealing to the young people, because I think prior to that, evangelism was like, oh, I must know the scripture, I must yeah. memorize all the scriptures, I must yeah. preach like my pastor. But that opened up a, a different way to see evangelism. Yeah. It became doable for them. Yeah. Like, I can do this. I can pick up uh, rubbish in school when I don't have to and that action can lead to questions say why are you doing this and right. that question can lead to the answer yeah. which is ultimately Jesus uh, I can bring a Bible to school put it on a table it can spark curiosity and I can have a conversation yeah. just different things yeah. and so Pastor we really didn't set out to start a movement we didn't have all the structure the plans uh, in fact I would say that after 14 15 years till today we are still catching up with the yeah. Holy Spirit, what He wants to do. Yeah. It was really a grassroots movement. The very day that you came to me uh, and you said, uh, Pastor, this revolution thing uh, sounds like it's already you know, in the hearts of some of these students uh, who were trying it out, I remember, yeah. uh, in school. And I remember you, know, you sharing with me how God was touching young people's hearts yeah. Yeah. and that even without our own human effort, yeah. God was already showing us that yeah. uh, He was with us and this was His idea. Yeah. And I think that's where we came up with the name Recess Revolution. Yes. And I think you also told me that yeah, it would be nice to see the students even bring their Bible, their printed Bible back yes. to school, yeah. uh, read the Bible during recess time. Uh, and that's part and parcel of going back lah, yeah. to how God meant it to be, uh, not being ashamed, not being yeah. shy. And uh, it was so good because the Lord began to reveal what revolution was uh, to be. I'm blessed to have you, uh, you know, uh, being part of the pioneering days. Uh, and of course, you led the way for the schools. Mm -hmm. uh, and Recess Rebel became such a phenomenon. I think we were in like 300 over schools. Yeah. And yeah. It, could have, it could not have been anyone or anything else but no. the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Yeah. Because we couldn't really go into the schools. Yeah. But the Holy Spirit could, and yeah. nothing could stop the Lord from doing what He did with the students. Yeah. And then of course, He went on to campus. Yes. College students started to use the same, love their classmates, love yeah. their lecturers, uh, love the security guards. And so then we went on to young working adults. Yeah. Young working adults went into their offices and their companies, yeah. bringing the same spirit of revolution. Yeah. And until today, it still lasts with a lot of people. Yeah. Seven. Uh, 8, 10, I mean, how many, 2007, 2008, oh, 13, 14, 15 yeah. years have passed yeah. and we are still hearing stories yeah. of how that love in action has touched and transformed people's lives. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, uh, I'm sure you also have got uh, one or two of your version, Andy, of how it started. Uh, maybe you could remind me. Yeah, I remember one young girl helped the teacher. The teacher kind of like in shock and also uh, because she's really touched, she started crying and uh, this girl came back to her youth group and shared, I made my teacher cry and, uh, and then she explained what that means and then other young people said, oh, I also want to make my teacher cry, meaning I also want to touch my teacher's heart. So they all went back to 
be kind to the teachers, which is I think maybe at that point in time not something common. Like teacher is someone you stay away from, but the students went and took the initiative and said, teacher, can I help you? Is there anything I can do for you? Can I pray for you? So one story became, 10 stories became, I think by today there's a thousand over stories yeah. of young awesome. people in wherever God has placed them, school, campus, offices, just being the church. So good. Um, and yeah, you, you said earlier that trend over schools. In fact, we've lost count. Uh, if I were to talk about like, oh, what's, what's revolution like right now? I can't really tell because not everyone writes back. Uh, but I know they're out there. Right. Sometimes we'll go to another state in the country yeah. and someone will walk up to us and it's say... Going to East Malaysia, yeah, that's exciting. East Malaysia and even into places like Kapit, yeah. where uh, I know it's not even accessible by road. Mm. But, you know, the message traveled, yeah. the idea traveled, yeah. and uh, we've got people uh, even in the, in the rural areas, yeah. uh, they themselves have needs. Yeah. But because God's love in their hearts is so much greater, mm. they start meeting other people's needs mm. also. So yeah, uh, Excellent. It's, it's just so really good. exciting. It's definitely a God thing. I love the long-term relationships it built. That sometimes people are not ready to receive Christ on the spot. Yeah. And that also is not really our ultimate goal. Yes, if they come, great, but we want to build something yep. greater, lo longer term for Malaysia, right? Yeah. We wanted to see the races becoming greater friends. Yeah. Just by the love of God. And that uh, we as Christians should show the way. We mentioned earlier that uh, at least to our knowledge there, are, there was at one point at least 300 over schools that were impacted and I, I did a search online to see actually how many schools are there, government schools uh, are there in Malaysia and I, I, I realised that at least 11,000 mm. if not more by now schools in Malaysia and uh, it sounds like a big dream but I think it will be really wonderful to see there is some kind of a revolution, yeah. some kind of a uh, movement uh, by believers in every school in right. Malaysia. That will be next. Yeah. How do we get there? I guess, uh, you know, continue to be faithful. Students who are practicing it, loving their neighbours in their school, praying for their schools, continue doing it and continue sharing those stories. Uh, we are blessed recently uh, that our web, web development company decided to bless us with a new website. Mm. The website can be a place where these stories can, can be compiled. Right. People can go there to read stories right. and be inspired with yeah. ideas. Uh, that's also where one can register and let us know that, uh, hey, I am from, say, Taiping, and I just started this little prayer group, uh, and I'd like you to know about it so that you can pray for us. Because that's also the power of that community pastor. Uh, students from Sarawak knowing that there are people just like them over here in Sumnanjong and up north, and we're all in this together, and they are talking to each other. You know, this is grassroots. Yeah. Um, so I would say, you know, let's see more students rise up uh, in many more schools. Uh, that will require, I guess, those who are practicing it to share with their friends uh, through, you know, personal sharing and also through sharing yeah. stories on the website. Uh, website is very easy to remember. Uh, you are the revolution.com. The letter U, the letter R, the revolution.com. So it's not just a website name; it's a statement. It's a declaration. Yeah. You are the revolution. Yeah. Uh, and there's lots of resources there. Uh, materials on how you can start your group, some ideas for your first few weeks. Right. Uh, of course, people are asking, right? Yeah, but asking. How do they join it? Exactly. So we have the website, uh, which is dynamic, it's ongoing, it's, it's alive, and people are sharing stories. Uh, and then there's the book. So, uh, Pastor, speaking about the book, actually, we brought the book here today because yeah. we have a young person sitting here with us. Uh, and uh, this uh, young person just wants to hear the story, and in fact, uh, we're going to give this book to this young person yeah. uh, so you can have it, uh, have a read. In fact, uh, Pastor Kenneth wrote the book and uh, <laughs> he's already signed it for you. All the back pages are all the practical stuff. But I know uh, you are here because you asked about, you know, you asked about what do I do now? Yeah. So let's just say I sign up today, I go to the website, I put my name in. Next week when I go to school, what do I do? Um, very simple. Uh, you know, I, I, would, I would say just start sharing the idea with mm. a friend or two. Mm. Uh, the idea of like, hey, you know, God must have a reason for placing us here, right? Mm. Uh, and you know, we are the church. Church is not just a building, a program. We are the church. So maybe we should be asking ourselves, how can we be a blessing mm. in this school? How can we share the love of God? Mm. And uh, we have this reminder uh, to everyone in the movement to answer the question, how? Mm. How can I be a blessing? And the reminder is simply this, these three words, pray, 
listen and obey. So when you gather with your one, two, three, ten friends, gather to pray and ask God, God, how can I be a blessing in my school? How can I share the love of Christ to everyone? Pray. And then after you pray, it's, it only makes sense to listen because God will answer that prayer. God want to, wants to bless your school, so He will answer your question. And He will give you instructions, ideas, inspiration. And what's left to do after that is to just obey Him. And then after that is to witness. Uh, P-L-O-W, plow. What, what we're doing is just plowing the ground. We plant the seed after that, and then God does the rest. Uh, and the witness part is when the opportunity arises, uh, you can share uh, the good news with them uh, and also share what happened yeah. on the website. So pray, listen, obey, witness. It's as simple and as yeah. straightforward as that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, hope that helps. Yeah, <laughs> so uh, I hope that's clear. So glad that you are able to spend uh, time with us today. I realize that you've been listening so intently that you haven't even drank your uh, drink. Uh, but, uh, you know, we really are happy that yeah. you are excited to know more about this. We are glad that uh, Sandy and I are able to spend this time with you. You are our future and we thank God for people like you and your friends and your generation and it's our uh, privilege, uh, yeah. honour to yeah. invest our time in you. Don't wait any longer. You know, I know you've been praying. I know you've been seeking God for something awesome. Uh, God is awesome and God has given us an awesome tool. I believe that revolution really is a tool yeah. uh, in God's hands uh, to win our schools, to win our friends and to win our nation uh, for the Lord. So join us. <laughs>